Welcome back to Parallel South Africa. I'm Chris Bishop. Now, calling all tech entrepreneurs the good news and the bad news. But when it comes to business, you're still pretty much on your own in difficult economic times. The good news is that there are a few more people around to help you. Now, when President Barack Obama visited the Nairobi Tech Hub in 2015, there were 200 companies helping the start-up businesses there. Now, there is double that number, according to a report by an outfit called Village Capital. But is this reason to celebrate? Well, I have one of the authors of that report on the line, uh, Brenda Wangari, joining me via Skype, as well as Simunza Muyangana, of the co-founder of Bongo Hive in Zambia, Lusaka to be precise. To start off with you, um, um, Brenda, um, do you think um, <coughs> this report here shows that there's enough support for these tech companies that the continent is pinning its hopes on for the future? Thank you. So as of our 2015, when uh, President Obama visited the IHUB, there were around uh, 200 tech hubs in the whole of Africa. So currently, we are looking at around 500. And uh, when we ran our program last year, we worked with 15 um, ecosystem builders, and we exposed them to um, uh, the tech ecosystem in uh, Lagos, in Nairobi and Cape Town. And during this time, they got to interact with over 1,000 stakeholders in the tech ecosystem learned from them and also from each other so during that whole program um, there are a few learnings that we drew and one of and those are what we are sharing in the report and one of them is we believe that um, there are enough tech hubs and we don't need to build any more but rather we should invest more in the ones that exist and even for the ones that exist they should look more towards collaboration and a good example of this is um the south um, southern africa venture partnership which is a uh, collaboration of tech hubs in Zambia, Zambia, uh, Zambia, Zimbabwe, and Malawi, which uh, Simunza is part of, and he will tell you more about that. Okay, just um, to go for a word on the ground now to Lusaka in Zambia, and Simunza Muyangana, the co-founder of Bongo Hive, you're one of these uh, tech startup hubs. Do you think uh, that these uh, important startups are getting enough support, do you think, from the world of finance and grants? Um, so could you kind of repeat the question? There was a uh, do you think, there, from your experience on the ground, that uh, tech startups are getting enough financial support and help to grow? Oh, yes. So the attention that is required to help uh, tech startups grow uh, requires, first of all, there's the question of if the financing is, is there, are we finding the right entrepreneurs to build the, the tech uh, startups that uh, solve these problems? But then in, in, in addition to that, on the other hand, is that do, they, do, they, do the people who are starting the businesses have the correct education or the correct, understand the correct systems that will help them actually deal with the problems that address the, the situations? So yes, certainly um, the, financing, the financing seems to hold, continues to hover around, but it's looking for companies that are at certain stages, that um, uh, at later stage companies. So we still, so tech hubs are currently playing the full role of supporting early stage companies to get to the place where they can access the finance. Brenda, if I go back to you, uh, according to this report of yours, uh, something like 300 million has been poured into startups uh, across the continent. It sounds like a lot of money to most people, including me, but surely isn't this like a, a drop in the ocean? So this um, 300 million is, is in terms of grants, but when we talk about um, investments, we've had over 1 billion uh, over the past year. So while this is obviously very interesting, there's still a lot of work that needs to be done um, in terms of um, the early stage uh, deal flow, which is where the hubs uh, play a big role. Now, one thing I've got to ask you, uh, in your, your home country, I mean, I've interviewed your minister before in charge of uh, tech uh, many years ago in Nairobi, and he was saying that he thought Nairobi was going to become one of the world capitals of software, computers, mm -hmm. high-tech, and startups. How far true was that prediction? So, well, this is true, um, because Nairobi... Um, when we look at the startup funding going into Africa, it's mostly to th three countries. That's Nairobi, um, mostly to three cities. That's Nairobi, Lagos, and Cape Town. 
So there is um, a lot of things that are happening, and we also showcase um, some of the best uh, case practices are happening around the country, where life, uh, around, the, uh, around the continent, sorry, where there's still a lot of work that needs to be done. Okay, go back to uh, Zambia now um, for a word there. Uh, your, your, your government, I mean, Nairo, um, Kenya has tried to be very progressive, but uh, the Zambian government, uh, what have they done as well to try and help build the industry that you're in? Uh, so, um, over the last couple of years, um, government has continued to position the country with regards to ease of doing business, and that has helped uh, people with regards to ease of registration, ease of financing, uh, people being able to access financing and laws that support uh, There's still a lot of work with regards to uh, policy that directly addresses startups um, and the unique case of startups as high growth companies and, and companies that are going to access uh, financing that very often might come from outside the country and, and uh, making sure that the taxation laws match in with the companies that are within the, within the growth stage there. So these are conversations that we, um, as entrepreneur support organizations, continue to engage uh, government on. And um, I'm going to ask you both this question before we wrap up, uh, starting with uh, Lusaka Zambia. We've spoken a lot about what the organizations and the governments are doing, but what's not being done for these new companies, starting with uh, Zambia? All right. So I think a lot more can be done within the ecosystem to make sure that uh, if people who have ideas that solve grand challenges, um, and especially ideas that are scalable across the region of Africa, uh, the vast region of Africa, and, and solve uh, challenges that the, mass, the masses have, we get the right attention, the right financing, and the right support with regards to mentorship from business leaders around uh, around the place. We re governments recognize that there's an opportunity to create jobs through the support of such startups, but we know that um, unlike SMEs, this is a longer path and, and, and careful attention needs to be given towards these companies to make sure that they get it right so that they can scale properly and, 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 and also access them. So maybe opportunities around regional work, for example, companies that are getting into to other countries to ease access into. I think we've lost, we've lost him there. But Brenda, I've got to ask you that. I'm afraid we've lost contact with Osaka there. I've got to ask you the question, though. Uh, we've talked a lot in this report about what is happening. What isn't happening in Kenya, you think, for your uh, startups that should be? So one of the things uh, we saw while um, doing research for this um, report was um, a lot of entrepreneur support organizations run um, uh, broad programs and not really sector specific. And so with this, they're not able to attract the um, best uh, and the highest quality mentors, especially in a specific field. So one of the things we, we recommend in the report is for these organizations to run a sector specific programs. So an example will be an organization will do something like um, we're running a tech program for tech startups. That's not really, you know, like tech is broader. So for people who are more specific and they're like, uh, we're running a program in the healthcare industry or we're running something in agriculture, I find it much easier to co collaborate with uh, people like the government and also funders. Okay. Thank you very much indeed. That was Brenda Wangari, a program associate at Village Capital and co-author of the report, as well as Simunza Muyangana of the co-founder of Bongo Hive in Lusaka, Zambia. We're going to a quick break, but when we come back, we're going to be talking more stories and uh, more stories about the future.